uh, uh, my name is jawagar so i am working as a software developer in thoughtworks and uh, i have a totally years of uh, totally 10 years of experience in software development and i am i am actually specifically interested in uh, tech stack uh, which involves javascript either in, in back end of or front end and today i want to talk about the concept of uh, streams in node js uh, streams are uh, one of the best and uh, most misunderstood concept in node js and that is because uh, the concept of streams is little bit confusing and it's a little bit complex in nature uh, my language background is c sharp and java so in those languages so i use streams to uh, read the data from the file and then write the data back to the file so all those days i thought that streams are just kind of an api to access the file system and uh, without understanding the actual purpose of streams i've been using it for for a very long time and in this talk today we are going to talk about the actual purpose of streams and uh, the several different types of streams available in node js and the and the kind of api options that are available in node js that makes the streams most powerful feature in node js so uh, first let us begin with creating a simple example in node js application so uh, and then we'll see what are the problems that we are facing in that application and then we'll try to solve those problems using streams so the example uh, application that we are going to build is nothing but a simple uh, file compression application so we are going to read a data from the file and then compress it and then write the compressed data back to some kind of an output file so let's get to the coding part so to do this the first thing i need is to uh, i need to read the data from the file so in nodejs we have to use a built in nodejs package to do that Uh, which is called the fs so i have to import the fs package first so now i have uh, i imported the fs package and the next thing we need is the we ne we need to know the file path to read the data from right but i am not going to hard code the file path let's say we have to uh, read the file path from the console console line arguments so let me declare one more variable to hold the file path so in node js the uh, command line arguments are usually available as an array in process dot argv variable and if you notice here i am specifying the indexes to uh, because the uh, the first two arguments to your node js application is not actually the input for your application the first argument is actually the node command itself and the second argument is the name of the file that you are going to execute so the actual input for your application starts from the third argument so we have to uh, specify the indexes to here so now we got the uh, now we imported the fs package and we got the file path now all we have to do is to read the data from the file so i'm going to declare one more variable to store the data so i'm going to use the function read file sync so i have to pass the file path so now we have the data so now we have to do the compression on top of this data so in node js there is a, another node js built in package to do the compression uh, which is called zlib so i'm going to import the zlib package actually there are uh, many third party libraries also available outside to do the compression uh, but just for simplicity i'm going to stick to the uh, node js built in uh, package so now we have the zlib library what we are going to do is we are going to call a specific function in that library to do the compression so gzip is the function if you invoke this function it uh, and you have to pass the data which you want to compress it will actually compress the data so the first argument is the data that you want to compress and the second argument to this function is actually a callback uh, which will be executed once the compression is done and that callback will actually carry the compressed data also so i'm going to declare the callback like this so inside the callback now we have access to the compressed data now what we have to do we have to write the compressed data to a output file so i'm going to use uh, the fs package again so let's say the output file uh, name is out.gz and then we have to pass the compressed data here yeah 
that's it. Uh, let me add one more large statement at the end so that we will get notified when the compression is done. Let's say compression done. So now we can go to the terminal and we can test our code. Uh, uh, okay, before I invoke the command, let me list all the files in this directory. So if you see here, I actually have some sample files uh, to test the file compression logic. So I'm going to use this uh, medium.txt file uh, whose file size is two megabytes. So let's try to compress that file. Let's say node index.js. Index.js is the file that I'm writing the code now. And then let's pass the file path, which is medium.txt. It says the compression is done. Let me list the files once again. So you can see the out.gz file right here, and whose size is four bytes. Uh, obviously, obviously the file size got reduced, but don't worry too much about the file size because uh, the file, the medium.txt is actually a sample file which does not contain any content in series. So I just created that file. So don't worry about the file size. So now, uh, uh, so our code is working now, right? So I have one more file in the directory, which is called large.txt, whose file size is two GB. So let's try to compress that file using our code. So node index.js, I'm going to say large.txt. So if you see here, we got an error, which says the FS file too large. So if you try to Google this error, you will get an explanation saying that Node.js runtime has a, has a, has a limit to the uh, buffer size to which you can store the data to the buffer. It has a limit and looks like we reached the limit. Why this is happening? Because the same code that works for a smaller file is not working for the larger file. The reason is that we are trying to read the data and then put the data, put the whole data into the memory and then trying to apply our compression logic on top of that. That's why Node.js is throwing this error. Now what we will do, we will go back to the presentation and then we'll talk about streams. Then we will come back to this code and try to fix the problem. So streams are nothing but a collection of data uh, similar to list, array, or string. But the only difference is in case of streams, the data will not be available all at once. And it does not have to fit in your memory. So in traditional cases, what we do, we read the data, we put the whole data into the memory, and then we do all kind of processing. But in case of streams, you read the data chunk by chunk, and then you apply the processing. So you don't have to wait for the whole data to be available for you to start the processing. You can start the processing as and when, when the data gets arrived. So in Node.js, there are several different types of uh, streams available. Uh, one is the readable stream. So readable stream represents, or uh, it is an abstraction of the source uh, to which you can uh, send the data to. And the underlying source could be anything. It could be a file, or it could be a database, or it could be a HTTP response from the server. And one of the good example for readable stream is fs.createReadStream. So when you call this function, you can actually pass a file path to this function. And when you call this function, this function will return your stream object from which you can read the data chunk by chunk. And the next thing is writable stream. So similar to that, uh, writable stream is actually an abstraction of the destination to which we can send the data to. And the underlying destination could be, again, anything. It could be a file, it could be a database, or it could be a HTTP request to the server. And one of the good examples for writable stream is fs.createWriteStream. So again, if you call this function, it will return you a stream object through which you can write data chunk by chunk. So do plus stream is nothing but it has both readable and writable ends. And one of the good example is net.socket object in Node.js. So if you work with the socket-based uh, applications, once you establish the connection between the server and the client, then you can use the st same stream object to send and receive messages. So that's what we call as duplex streams. And the transform stream is also similar to duplex streams. It has both readable and writable ends. But in addition to that, it actually applies some kind of transformation to the data before it sends the data to the writable end. And one of the good example is zlib.creategzip. So you see that zlib is the package that we were just using in our file compression example. 
but we are not calling this function we were using some other function to uh, compress the data but if you call this function it will return you a transform stream to which you can connect a readable stream to one end and a writable stream to the other end and the transformation will happen it will do the compression as and when the data arise from the readable end and then it will write the compressed data to the writable end so uh, we are going to use all these streams uh, in a minute in our file compression example uh, but before we do that we have to understand one more concept in streams which is composability so if you guys already have uh, experience with the linux command line i'm sure you might have come across with this concept of combining multiple linux commands together to create a most powerful linux command right uh, for example in this case i'm just combining some smaller linux commands and then i'm trying to list all the running paths of my uh, particular service in the kubernetes cluster so similar to this concept you can actually combine multiple streams together to create a more complex pipeline uh, to solve complex data flow problems so every stream object uh, in, in node js actually exposed a function called pipe uh, using which you can connect multiple streams together so in this case if you see i'm just connecting a readable stream and a writable stream so what happen in this case is the data will flow from the readable uh, end to the writable end automatically and you can also connect multiple transform streams together to create more complex pipeline so now we will go back to our uh, file compression example and try to use all these concepts there so i'm going to remove all this existing code so let me so we have to we are going to use streams now so i'm going to create the readable stream first let me say readable file stream so fs package we just saw that fs package has a built in function to create a readable stream from the file path right so i'm going to use that function so now we got the readable stream and i have to create a writable stream also so let's say writable file stream uh, let's say the output file name is out.gz so now we have both readable and writable stream but we also need a transformation stream to do the actual compression so let's say compression stream and i'm going to call the function from the zlib package to create the transformation stream for us but this time i'm not going to use the gzip function i'm going to use the other function called create gzip this is going to return a transform stream for us so now we have all the streams available all we have to do is to connect all these streams together to create the compression pipeline readable stream dot pipe compression stream and then again another pipe writable stream that's it so now let's go back to the terminal and try to uh, run the same command i'm going i'm i'm, I'm trying to compress the same large.txt file uh, which is of 2 gb let's see what happens so this might take a while because the file size is huge but this time instead of loading the whole data into the memory it is going to read the data chunk by chunk and then it will do the compression so it looks like the compression is done we can list all the files in the directory so now you can see that the out.gz file has been modified just now and the size is 2 megabytes so our code actually works for larger files so if you use streams you can you can handle large sets of data you don't have to worry about how large the data is right yeah so now we can go back to the presentation so now there is one more concept Uh, we have to understand while we learn in the streams which is event emitters so node js is single threaded right there is no concept of threads in node js so node js internally uses this event driven architecture uh, to achieve the concurrency so certain objects in node js uh, emit events when they perform certain functions it emit events over the period of time and we can subscribe to those events and we can perform some kind of actions whenever that event gets emitted all these things will happen asynchronously and the most important thing is all stream objects in node js are extended from event emitters 
So all stream objects emit events over the period of time which we can make use of. So every event emitter object exposes a function called on. So we can use this on function to attach any event handler to a particular named event. So in this case, I'm just trying to listen to the data event uh, from the readable stream. So similar to that, there are several events that will be emitted uh, by both readable and writable streams. So data is the event which will be emitted whenever there is a new piece of data is available for read. And you see there is a drain event in writable stream. So drain event will be emitted whenever the internal buffer in the writable stream goes empty. Don't worry, I will talk about the internal buffer in a while. So for now, just consider uh, drain is another event which will be raised by writable stream. And both readable and writable stream emitted close event. So that event will be emitted whenever the underlying source or destination gets closed, which means there is no more data available to read or write. And whenever something unexpected happens, all the stream objects will emit error event that will carry the error object. And these are some primary events uh, that will be emitted by both the streams, but there are several other events also. So now what we will do, again, we will go back to our file compression example and we will try to use these concept of events. So right now our file compression example, when you run it, it is not giving any feedback to us. So we don't have, we don't know what exactly is happening in the backend, right? So what we will do, uh, we will try to add, or we will try to show a simple progress to the user during the compression, okay? So how, how we can do that? So to do that, we actually need to know the total size of the file data. And then we also need to know the, uh, the size of the data that has been consumed for compression. So for example, uh, if the file size is 2 GB, and if the data that has been consumed for compression is just 1 GB, then we can say that the progress is 50%. And if it is 1.5 GB, then we can say it is 75%. So let's try to do that. So first we need to know the total uh, size of the file data. So I'm going to declare a variable to hold that value. So I'm going to use a, uh, use a function from the FS package, which is called the fs.statsync. So this function will actually give you all the meta information about a file. Uh, but we are only interested in the size attribute. And then let me declare one more variable uh, to store the value of consumed file size. So I'm going to initialize this variable to zero. And then uh, this is where we are going to use the event emitters. So we just now saw there is an event called the data, right? So how are we going to increment this consumed file size? So whenever there is a new piece of data is available for us to read, we are going to increment the consumed file size variable. Uh, since we are going to update this variable, we cannot use the const here. Let me change that to let. So, and I'm going to subscribe to the data event of the readable stream. And let's say the handler has show progress. So now I have to declare a function called show progress. So this event handler actually carries the new piece of data that is available for us to read. So it is available in the argument here. So I'm going to say it is data. So using this data variable, I'm going to increment the consumed file size variable like this consumed file size plus equal to data dot length. So now we have both the total file size and the consumed file size. Now we can go ahead and calculate the progress, right? Um, so I'm going to declare a variable to hold the progress. So the formula to calculate the progress is consumed file size divided by the total file size. And then you just have to multiply it with 100 so that we can display the progress in percentage. So now we have the progress. So all we have to do is to just log the progress to the output. Uh, let's use the string interpolation here. Let's say compressing and then let's say progress. 
and we also going to display it as a percentage. So let me append the person symbol here. Yes. So now let me go to the terminal and let's see what happens. I'm going to use the same large.txt file because so that the progress will be obvious. So this is not what we are actually expecting, right? The progress is printing in new line. Every progress is printing in new line. So, so we, we don't want this. We actually want to print the progress in the same line over and over again. So how to do that? Sorry. Yeah, we can clear the console every time we print the progress. That is one option. And the another option is you can actually append the line feed escape sequence at the end of the statement. So the slash R is actually the line feed escape character. If you append this character at the end of the statement, uh, it will try to print the statement to the same line over and over again. Uh, but one problem with this approach is that we cannot use the console.log here because console.log usually ignores all the escape characters. So we have to use the other function called, sorry, process.stdout.write. So now let's see. So let me clear the console and run the same command again. Yeah. So now it is printing the progress in the same line, which is good. But the another problem is it is printing the progress in decimal value, which is something we don't want. So what is the easiest way to convert a decimal value in Node.js to integer? What is it? Sorry? Yeah, we can do formatting. Also, we can use math.floor. Yeah, and we can also use parse, parse int function. I think parse int function is available. But one easiest approach in Node.js to convert the decimal value to integer is you just have to append a pipe here and say zero. This will actually convert the decimal value to integer. This pipe operator is nothing but the bitwise R operator, which is actually designed to work only with the integer values. But if you try to use it with any decimal value, it will force convert that into integer. So just we are trying to make use of that feature here. So let's see how it works now. Yes. So now the progress is clear. So now we achieved what we want. So now uh, we, we learned how to use the events emitted by stream objects. And then we created our file compression example, right? So let's go back to the presentation. So we know that streams are actually used for handling the continuous flow of data. It's not just about files. Any continuous flow of data streams are the ideal solution to handle that. But there is one classic problem with the, in handling the continuous flow, flow of data. Consider you have a container of water in your hand. And then you try to pour that water into another container. And if, if the other container, if the water in the other container has not been consumed at all, or if it has been consumed slowly, at some point, the water will overflow and you will end up wasting a lot of water. And this is exactly the same thing would happen in case of the flow of data also. So in this case, if the producer is keep sending the data to the consumer, and if it is sending the data very fast, and if the consumer is not consuming the data as fast as the producer is sending, the data will get spiled up in your memory and you will end up facing the same memory pressure. So I still remember I, uh, I was working in a .NET project a few years back, so where we have to fetch some data from a legacy system. Uh, the legacy system is IBM SHQ. So from the .NET system, we just have to subscribe to this IBM MQ, and the MQ will keep sending you the data. And then we have to do some kind of a processing on top of the data, and then we write the process to data to the database. So the problem is the MQ usually sends the data very faster. But we have some problem with our processing, but our processing logic is not that efficient. It's not that faster. So we faced the same issue. The data will keep getting piled up in the memory. And then at some point, it started impacting the other process, which is running in the same system. And we, we actually decided to improve the efficiency of the processing part. We thought that if you speed up the processing, then it might resolve the issue. But that's not the ideal solution. So the ideal approach would be, uh, we needed a system in place which should tell the MQ that, hey, we haven't yet processed the data that you already sent. So you just have to stop sending any more data. So once you're done with the processing of the existing data, 
then the same system should alert the mq now we are done you can send for the data so we actually needed some kind of a system in place we needed that kind of a flow control in place which was actually missing but when i explored this streams concept in nodejs i actually never faced, faced this issue of back pressure because the entire system that i was talking about which is actually built in within the nodejs streams so every stream object in nodejs have a internal buffer uh, in which the data gets stored before it sends for the actual processing uh, in this case uh, the data from the readable stream will first get stored in the internal buffer of the writable stream before it gets sent to the writable end uh, right to the actual destination or something and this internal buffer has a size limit the default value of this internal buffer is 16 kilobytes but you still have an option to change the buffer size of this internal buffer the point is when this internal buffer gets filled the writable stream automatically alerts the readable stream to stop sending the data so the entire data flow will be passed and then once all the data from the internal buffer has been processed the writable stream again send the data uh, again send another event and that will resume the data flow so this whole system of flow control is already built in within the node js streams and this is the attribute we have to use if you want to change the default maximum size of the internal buffer which is called high watermark and one more thing we have to notice here is uh, the whole automated system of handling back pressure will only work if you use the pipe api that i was explaining previously so there are other options available to handle the stream data you can just uh, subscribe to the events that will be emitted from the streams and then you can handle the data but if you use uh, such kind of events uh, this automated system will not work so you have to use the pipe api uh, to make this work and that's why node js always recommend us to use the pipe api in case of streams so uh, as i already told you streams are just not for the files so any continuous flow of data that can be uh, handled via streams so there are several interesting use cases for streams Uh, one of that is gulp js is actually a task management system it's a library built for uh, javascript applications front end applications uh, which is used to uh, minify or uglyify then you can do the babel compiling everything and then you can create a, a pipeline uh, using that so gulp js internally uses streams to achieve that and i'm sure everyone would hear about the reactive programming it's a different idea it's a different paradigm in programming so it's it's all about it's focusing on the handling of asynchronous data streams and there are several libraries available uh, which will be uh, which which provides several uh, helper functions to achieve reactive programming and rhjs and highland js are one of the example for that uh, usually rhjs internally don't use the stream api in nodejs they have their own version of streams but still these libraries are built around the concept of streams and highland js actually uses the stream api of nodejs so yeah so that is all i wanted to talk about streams today any questions sorry yeah uh, actually http request and http response object in nodejs are actually streams so any communication that happen through http and nodejs are actually streaming only so yes of course we can use this for networking uh, in nodejs we have only two options one is uh, you can uh, you can consume the data through streams as a raw data as a buffer and one more is that you can consume the data as a json object so in java because javascript is dynamic typed so you don't have a, a streams for every type so you you have only two things one for uh, raw data and one for json objects so in that case um so if a particular uh, um 
like, like let's say the comp- the internal buffer value is like 16 kb uh, and for each and every uh, 16 kb chunk we are actually doing the tra- uh, compression transformation so uh, after the compressed file right i mean after the, all the compression has been done each of those 16 kb chunks has to be linked internally right like the um, i mean the the compression algorithm it has to have some kind of a link uh, in for each and every you mean that you have, have to persist the order yeah yeah we have to persist the order so in that case um, does it affect the compression um, size limit uh, so if let's say the the maximum limit uh, without com- uh, streaming is like 1 gb okay so if uh, if uh, if i use uh, um, uh, without streaming and then with streaming if you do the compression for that 1 gb file um, so the end result which i'm getting will it be affected so will will the the the, the compression method uh, so will the the streaming compression method will actually produce a larger compression compressed file uh, as far as i know it won't impact your end result because uh, what we are actually doing we are writing the data to an output file so no matter whether we are using streams or not but we are just writing the data to an output file okay. in streams you are just writing the data in chunk by chunk one by one you are not dumping the whole data into the file instead of doing that you are just writing one by one so that would definitely wouldn't impact the end result okay. so it would still persist to the same order so it so wouldn't the, be corrupted so the changing of the chunk size won't affect our end result no of course it won't change okay Any other questions? You mean parse? Hmm. Yeah. So, so that, that happens. Uh, no, but what is the question? Suppose we have a reader, we yeah. are reading from a stream, okay, and we just straight away are adding to a stream, adding to another thing, okay? There is no, let us take the example you have shown, and instead of any compression, we are reading, we are connecting a reading stream to a writing stream, hmm. okay? But let's assume that, you know, we are, uh, you know, making the buffer size of the reading stream as 1 MB, hmm. and the writing stream as 1 byte. Okay. Okay, so this guy reads 1 MB and then writes to the 1 byte. So what happens? The the write stream is going to say as pause. No, yeah. So you you said the writable stream is one MB. No, no. Re- reading stream is one MB. Okay. Writable stream is one byte. One byte. Okay. So the the writable stream is going to say as pause. Uh, yeah. Right. So writable. So, yeah. Yes. So Sorry. in this case, um, the readable stream is it going to read the data again and show it in the memory, or it it won't read at all? You got you got my question. Yeah, so readable stream, uh, you have 1 MB, so it will read all the data and put the NMB of data. It will read 1 MB at a time. Yeah. And then it will try to write, but that guy will take only one byte. One byte per, yeah. So it's going to send a pause. Yes. So So that the memory will be in the internal buffer. So so the readable stream will it read the next MB and show it in the memory. Yes, of course, that will happen. That's the asynchronous thing. So it won't, because the internal buffer within the readable stream goes empty, right? So now it has the capacity to read the data from the file again and put it in the buffer. So it will do that asynchronously, but it won't send the data to the writable stream uh, because writable stream don't have the capacity to consume the data right now. So readable stream can take the data and put it in the buffer and it will wait for the writable stream to send another notification. So that's what exactly would happen. So that's the asynchronous uh, asynchronous in, in Node.js, right? What is the meaning of the uh, buffer size we mentioned to the readable stream? So, so it won't send the data to the writable stream. Yeah, so it remains, right? Yeah, it, it remains in the internal buffer. Yeah. See, if it is going to read more data and keep it in memory, when I specify the readable stream buffer size as 1 MB, it doesn't satisfy the my requirement, right? Because I want the readable stream buffer size to be 1 MB all the time. So it is going to read the second MB again, then whatever parameter I specified isn't, isn't taken into effect. It is not respecting my instruction saying that we use only one MB of memory. So, so I, I, I mean that the data will be there in the readable stream, but there is no point in that because the writable stream is not ready to consume the data. Yes. So yes. it will be in the internal buffer. So we don't usually have to cons- configure in that way. So putting one MB limit to the readable stream and no, I'm one just giving a scenario where I can explain my question. Okay. I'm sorry. 
I'm just giving a situation where I can explain my question. Like, yeah, so not a, you know, ideal. Uh, so that's what I understood. So the readable stream, when uh, it cannot send the data to the writable stream, that, because there is no point, because the writable stream is not ready. So it has to keep the data in the memory. And when the writable stream uh, writes everything, processed everything, then it can consume more memory, uh, more data from the readable stream. So that's how the flow control exactly happens. Uh, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's what the buffer says. So you can specify the readable buffer size for the readable stream. And then every day, for example, if you say uh, 16KB, then the data dot length for every iteration would be 16KB. Yeah. No, no. And actually, there is a, a one more interesting use case for streams. Uh, like uh, you might have heard about this log aggregation, right? If you are using working in the microservice arch architecture, we might have used the log aggregation system to collect all the logs from all the process and then write to some kind of uh, server. So in Node.js, stream supports this merging the streams together and then you can fork the streams. So I always wonder how the log aggregation systems internally work, but we can actually do that using streams very easily. So you can you can do you can create a readable stream for every process standard output. Actually, Node.js standard output is also stream, like a like a file path or a HTTP request. Standard output and standard input are also stream. So you can configure or you can create a readable stream which will read the standard output from every process in your microservice architecture, and we can combine all the uh, streams together. And then if you want to do some kind of a transformation on top of that, then you can do that. And then again, you can fork it, which means you can fork it and send the data to several destinations. You can, uh, you can write the data to a file path and you can write the same data to a server. So you can do that. So that merging and forking of the, the feature, you see more power. That is one of uh, another interesting use case. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.